Good afternoon. Today's lesson is on mechanisms. You know, this is one of our exam questions that I'm going to discuss with you. Okay, uh, question 2a um, says that a schematic drawing of a mechanism consisting of a crank AB is given. Okay, this crank AB um, has a connecting rod BC and connecting rod CD and another crank DE. The specifications, the position A and the position of E is fixed. Okay, connecting rod BC, BC is pin jointed at crank um, or to crank AB, so it means that there's a pin over there, so it can swivel around that pin, and then the same with CD, is also pin jointed to BC, and yet again CD is pin jointed to DE over there. So um, the motion is during or this crank will rotate in a clockwise direction. This crank will also rotate in a clockwise direction. And what they specified here is that both these cranks are rotating at the same velocity. So it's the same speed. Okay, instruction is to trace the locus um, generated by point C for one complete rotation of the two cranks. Okay, and we need to show all constructions. Okay, so I'm going to move away from the question so you can see the okay a little bit better. Now, what is important for me, and I'm going to mark this with purple, is point A, we know that that point A is fixed. Point E is fixed, so those points can't shift. For me, okay, what I also want to state is that that line there is fixed, so we can't change the length of the crank DE. We can't change the length of this crank AB, so nothing can change that length. Nothing can change the length of this rod here from B to C. And nothing can change the length of CD. Because those are solid rods. Nothing can change it. So those for me are the items that are fixed. Certain items for me are semi or points are semi-fixed. The points that are semi-fixed, I'm gonna mark those with yellow is point B, because point B, I know point B is semi-fixed and point B can only be on that low key, okay, which is a circle, as well as point D. Point D is semi-fixed, it can only be on that low key. Okay, those are the points that are semi-fixed. And now I can use that information to help me to get the information of the low key that I need to establish, and that's the low key for point C. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the circles, and I'm going to subdivide the circles into equal parts, making use of my 36T set square. So what, I can, what I'm actually saying is that I can establish the next position of point B. So if that is B0, then this will be B1, B2, B3, 4, Five. I need to be six over here, so that will be in line with that. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then back to zero. Okay, so that will be for one revolution. Because this is rotating in the same direction as that, okay, and then again uh, and to the same speed, the same velocity. I know that. I can use my 3060 to subdivide this as well. Okay, you don't need to use the 3060, you can make, maybe just subdivide that circle into equal any number of parts, but it's just easier to use the 3060. My point D0 will definitely be there because it's rotating at the same velocity, so after this has rotated 30 degrees, that one will be a, an added 30 degrees. So that will be my point D1. Point D2 will be after this is rotated 6 degrees. That must also be 60 degrees. Okay, point 3, point 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and back at 0 or 12. Let's look at the rest 12. So if B12 will be over there, that position, then D 
will be back at that position. Okay, so those points are now established. We know where B1 is. Okay, so let's focus on B1 and D1. What do we know? We know that B, C is never going to change. That distance is going to stay the same. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set my compass to that distance of the rod. Set my compass to that distance. Shift it over to 1. Okay, and then make an arc. On that arc will be the next C. What can I use to help him to get the next C? I can say, okay, but D and C is also not fixed. Oh, not going to change. Okay, so the length of DC is also going to be fixed. Okay, so that means that C1 will then be there. That is C0. C1 is over there. Okay. D2. Make an arc. So we know that D2 must be on that arc. Because DC is fixed. Now I do the same. Back at this. So if we have two compasses, then it will just be easier. So if we use that compass, so I can shift it to B2, and that is then going to be the position of C2. Shift it to D B3. C3 must be on that arc, and then the distance from D to C is fixed. So we're busy with point 0.3, make an arc, there's my C3. Okay, I'm going to carry on in the same sequence to establish the next points. So the next one will be C4, okay, and then C5, etc. And then I will return with the discussion. Okay, there we go. So I'm recapping, okay, so the point B was semi-fixed. So point B must only, can only be on this circle. Point D is semi-fixed, can only be on that circle, and we know where the specific positions are. Okay, and then we see that this is fixed, the distance, and that distance is fixed. Okay, and then we needed to carry on with points number four. Okay, so at that distance, at D4, make an arc. At, with that distance, at B4, make an arc, there's point four. Same distance, 2.5, make an arc. 6, make an arc, okay, and using that distance, make an arc. And where those two arcs intersected, that gave me points 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, okay, and then back at half. Okay, now what I need to do is I need to join these points, try to do three at a time, like we did with the previous Loki that we drew. Okay, and then if we draw three at a time, you should not be getting the balling effect. And then if you're happy, then you can draw that low key in a type. Okay, I'm just going to use a blue cookie here so we can see it better. Okay, and there's that Loki. Mark allocations, four marks for the constructions. Okay, and then for each point was one mark. Okay, and then lastly for the drawing of the Loki. You can also try to draw the Loki, making use of your fringe curve or your flexi curve. Okay.